I, hello everyone. Uh, just uh, doing the ambassador community report. Martin's got the slides, so it's okay. We we can we can we can read what's. I think it's good enough. All right. Uh, so uh, I, I guess we are going to do a recap of what happened last year and what we want to achieve for the next coming year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to uh, pass the microphone to Jason. Oh, this is Jason An, um, originally from the Open Tech Korea YouTube group. And yes, it's nice to meet you guys. Hello, uh, my name is Marcelo and uh, one of ambassadors from Latin America and also in uh, user group Brazil. Hi, I'm Erwan Galen, ambassador uh, for uh, Europe and I'm based in France running a French user group. Yeah, hello, my name is Martin Kish and I'm also ambassador for Europe together with Ervan and Christian. I, I don't know where it's him, but um, we are doing this European region and be, I'm based in Budapest, Hungary and uh, running the Hungarian user group. Okay, so we like to talk a little bit about the user group size worldwide. We have a little growth since uh, Austin. So I guess there was around 86 user groups and we have now more than 100 all around the world. And so yeah, we have seen uh, a big growth in uh, new regions, uh, especially in uh, in Africa, where uh, we have a list of uh, of uh, four new user groups, and also uh, uh, in uh, Asia and uh, South America. So, and perhaps it's a new step for uh, for user group. Um, at the beginning, it was quite small groups, really technical. And now uh, we, we, we can see lots of events, lots of, uh, uh, we, we, we have more uh, vendors trying to integrate also the community uh, with OpenStack Day that uh, spread over all these, uh, these uh, regions. So perhaps you can, you can give the list um, of... Um, Actually, we can check the growth. So the size of the groups uh, maybe in in, uh, <clears throat> in the united states europe and asia is uh, not growing as much as it did previously seeing, but i think uh, it is not bad because yeah, we are we, seeing the growth is still there but we are seeing a more flatter trajectory in the graph but i can i think we can see the potential in the two new two, two regions that are a bit smaller right now so south america is also growing and africa is also growing so we need to make some focused effort in those region. Yeah, uh, we have a, a lot of new people from South America and also Africa. And uh, this number is from uh, Meetup platform. But uh, uh, we know we have a lot of others groups uh, creating events, but uh, don't have a, a Meetup uh, account so, or groups. And uh, uh, for example, South America, we have a lot of other groups in uh, Uruguay, uh, Chile, but don't, they don't have uh, meetup groups. So uh, we can see a lot of uh, growing in other accounts, but uh, they don't have a meetup account group. Okay. Yeah, on the, as an ambassador for any new group, uh, it's one of the ma main mission of ambassador is, is to improve and increase uh, the activity of, of user groups. So um, we have lots of requests of uh, organizers who, who want to start on the ambassador can, can get some internal resources, can, can, can try to find funds. Uh, we have special funds we, we, we can use also to, to help to launch uh, groups. And, uh, and 
most of them we, we, we have some experience with uh, uh, this type of organization and we can give you advices about this. So, uh, so you, you can find ambassador uh, web pages uh, on openstack.org and uh, you, uh, you have contact to ambassador. So, so it, it's very important uh, for us to, 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 to help you and to provide you uh, the best advice to, to run groups. So, um, uh, we have also a tool uh, created mainly uh, by Martin uh, called uh, groups.openstack.org. Uh, so this tool is like a complete directory of, uh, of uh, the user group, but it provides also uh, so, some, uh, some tools so you can perhaps give detail on the about, uh, groups. Yeah, I this groups portal is uh, representing the groups all around the world, but uh, usually most of the groups are using meetup.com to track the events and everything, but we are using that, that portal also to collect some statistical data. So we can, we can create those reports actually. And it's also good for us to, uh, to organize uh, and, and to have a complete list, to maintain, to give information for the foundation and also for, for people in the region to, to find uh, uh, which group exists and, uh, and uh, it's a group supported by the foundation. Yeah, actually. Um, actually, we have 18 official user groups and what official user group means, it, it means that the foundation and the community is recognizing the effort of the organizers. And, and basically stable user groups and well-maintained user groups can get this title. And uh, maybe we have six new since Austin, which user groups do we know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, in, in Austria we had uh, 11 and now uh, uh, more six uh, science Austria. So uh, this is in, in on the group's uh, official page. Okay. And uh, uh, about a new user group, um, so we said we have a grow in uh, Africa, so uh, four new groups, Senegal, Côte d'Ivoire, Ghana, and South uh, Africa. So we can see in every region there is a um, specific orga organization for event. And um, so we have also to adapt uh, uh, there is no uh, common rules uh, to say uh, it's this way you will organize an event because in each country uh, it could depend the hour, how to contact people, the way of presenting the event. So, so it, for this, it, it, it's more a discussion uh, you can have with, uh, with us and it, it's more finding a way to, to improve uh, the organization. So. So we've had one new group come from Asia, with, which is Pakistan. So there was a group previously there, but it kind of, there was no activity. So new request has come in. So as we've approved it, and now just we are going to help all these groups along to become official. There is a process which has to be followed to become an official group. Uh, I think the link is there on the groups portal. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, we will share it in the, uh, we will share it in the, community mailing list, I think. Yeah. yeah so uh, everyone can take a look. But what we try and do is reduce the focus on one organizer and try and have multiple people running it. We also try and have some official means to contact the group, like a mailing list or a Facebook page, uh, if you have an IRC channel. So the process is right here, right? So if you, if you want to start a group and then over six months or a year become official, this is the process you need to follow. And I think r regular meetups are the most important thing because uh, once you start meeting regularly, more people find, find in interest, right? If you're meeting regularly, people will start coming regularly because it will become a forum to share new, new ideas and kind of talk to your peers. So it's very important to meet regularly. Uh, also, when a group 
becomes approved and ambassador is assigned to the group to help them through the official process. So if you have any doubts and you're running a group, please contact your ambassador or uh, alternatively you can contact Tom. Uh, it's important also uh, some some uh, countries have only one group and some countries uh, like uh, United States have a lot of other groups so uh, we can uh, we can uh, do uh, one group only or more than one group per country is depend of the the size of the organizers and uh, for example in Brazil we have only one uh, group registered but uh, uh, depend of the region, we can create more uh, groups also. Yeah, basically we are really interested in healthy and long-living user groups. That This is one of our goals, that keep them running. Yeah, and sometimes also we discuss with organizers because in some cities there is few groups, so we prefer to uh, to find, to, to, to let people together and to merge and to have initiative because um, uh, most of the time we see one people as an ID to launch a group, so um, it could be quick at the beginning, but it's really important to be a team, uh, not a team only with one company, but also when you want to organize an event every month or every two months, it, it needs lots of time. So people who launch a group, the first thing to start is trying to to, to get help from other people. So, so with this, you will be able to run a group for a long time. And it, it's very important to, to, to let the, 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 the your group here during, during the time. Yeah, yeah, basically, during the last year, as I remember, we had sim, um, some merge yeah, issues or merge happened. And in the Vietnam what, group, it yeah, was yeah. two groups. Yeah. yeah, and basically, instead of a competing groups, we like to see collaborating people. So it is, it is our interest, and it is good for the entire community. So instead of doing wars and, and competition, it, it is much better to, to focus on common goals. Yeah, basically, I think a lot of user groups have issues with finding speakers. And I think if you are running a user group and like to find a speaker, this summit is a good opportunity. And go down to the marketplace and visit the session and try to get some <laughs> very good uh, speakers and, uh, and try to invite them to your user group. So it is a fantastic opportunity that, that you can be here and, and directly contact with those, with those guys. But we have this OpenStack Foundation Speakers Bureau page where, where you can find people who are available as a speaker. Yeah, well, for an uh, evening event, it's quite difficult. If, so in this, uh, in this uh, website, you will find the, the country where every speaker uh, uh, can, can travel. But yeah, for, for small event, if you have a 30 minute uh, session, it's quite difficult to ask for, uh, for travel. But uh, for OpenStack Day, it's really easy and you will find people perhaps you don't know in your country. Um, but also for some uh, regions, uh, we, we organize sometimes some uh, remote session. So for per it's not perfect to have a, a Skype presentation, but if it's well organized with a good bandwidth, so it's something to prepare really, not to do something quickly at the end. And also the speaker, it's good to have a, a camera for the speaker. Uh, so for Africa, we have done this a uh, few times. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and people are, are very happy and we, we are also discussing with people, but it's very important to have some good technical organization to have a good quality uh, for, uh, for the audience. So, so oh, for, for some events, you can use one remote session on two local sessions because most of the group are starting with 101 uh, presentation of OpenStack, sometimes some small workshops, 
And after, it's more difficult when we are, we are, we are trying to organize around a uh, theme, around uh, topics, to have an expert on neutron, an expert on one subject. In some regions, we have lots of contributors, so it's quite easy to find experts on each uh, project of OpenStack, but uh, in, in some other countries, it's not easy. So, um, so this tool is good uh, for big events and for some uh, um, some countries also remote uh, remote session can can be uh, organized. Okay, and uh, it is a li little bit tied to the user groups and the committee somehow that we have OpenStack Days event all around the world. Um, yesterday we had this session about OpenStack Days event, so if you missed it, you can watch it on the video recordings or something, but, uh, but OpenStack Days event really, uh, I really help you to grow the community. So if you have some local communities or in your region or, or multiple countries have very active user groups, then it is very useful to start to organize an OpenStack Day event and bring in much more content and much more visibility for the entire OpenStack brand. I think uh, the foundation is also helping people organize local events, uh, OpenStack Days event, and uh, they are helping with speakers and some financing also. So I think before you can start an OpenStack Days, we would like to see some momentum in your user group uh, being active for a while. I think becoming official is also a good part of it. Right, so I think uh, if you want to do an OpenStack Days, you have to put in three or four months of hard work and book a venue. There's, there's a lot of things involved. I think on, on this stage, we've all done multiple OpenStack Days, so we are aware of the difficulties of organizing these. So if you want to know more, you can catch one of us uh, after, the, af after this talk, and we can, we can guide you with how to start one. Foundation can help in, in OpenStack Days also. Uh, we have uh, some contacts. Denise can uh, help a lot of groups uh, to create OpenStack Days. And uh, here we have a, a list of the next uh, OpenStack Days uh, to this year. Uh, we have uh, more seven uh, events uh, already scheduled. And, uh, for example, Berlin, Canberra, Natal, Montreal, Paris. Florianopolis, Salt Lake City. So uh, our events are already created and uh, uh, we can create your, your uh, uh, our event. So uh, OpenStack Day event uh, become official brand this year. So usually uh, we uh, try to coordinate the dates in the region. So if you're new, you can uh, ask one of the ambassador uh, if there is any like a coordination already happening. Uh, so that uh, you can get more idea and uh, right, schedule, yeah. yes, sir. But I think, I think these events, the day events, are very helpful in getting momentum in your community and kick-starting it, you know, because uh, we have seen that, look, uh, if, if you look at some of the ones in, in the past, a lot of people at, attend them, you get to meet a lot of interesting people who have some good ideas and they present to you. We... Last year, we had Jonathan Bryce attend the one in India, and there was a lot of excitement around that, right? So I, I, think, I think it's a good way, if you're a user group organizer, to kind of look to do this and help, uh, help OpenStack grow in your community. And, uh, we, here we have uh, some pictures from OpenStack Days. Uh, some OpenStack Days have uh, uh, 100 people, or uh, other OpenStack Days have 1,000 people uh, also. Uh, like China, I think China is the, the biggest uh, open stack day. Uh, 2400. Yeah. 2400, a lot of people. So uh, the open stack days can be with ever, ever size and, and is a good option to present open stack. I think, I think before we move to questions, I think. Uh, uh, there were some things we needed to discuss with regards to, uh, there are some changes happening in the summit format that we need to communicate to our 
various communities. And I think there were a few questions around uh, travel support as well. I think all of us had them. Uh, so I, I guess we need to kind of collate the questions and ask the foundation because a lot of questions have come to me from my own user group saying, what's happening with the summit? It's being, uh, PTG is being separate. There is a forum also. Uh, it's just a lot of questions. It's, it's a new format. Is the travel support going to be dropped for PTG or is it going to be dropped for the summit? How does it work? Right, so I think Denise is here so uh, we can ask other questions indirectly. And if any of you have any further questions. Yeah, I have a question for the audience. Who is running a user group? Raise your hands. Okay, super. <laughs> and uh, so, how many of you are official user group? Okay, great. So, I guess you guys can also help other people get there. Mark. So, I I guess you guys can also help if uh, if anyone has questions, you can always come to us. But there are other groups who have gone through the official process. They might have a better insight into what is needed to become official. Yeah. yeah, so if we are looking for the future, I think we have more questions actually than answers. So definitely these, these changes will happen. Yeah, and, and we will have we, some talks with the new logo, for example, for the next one year. So yeah, I, I, think, I think there is also a new logo. Uh, I think there are some, uh, we, we have to also discuss the format of the meetups because uh, in India we've usually done a very long meetup, but we're finding that fewer people are attending the longer meetup, which is more than two hours. So we are thinking of doing smaller meetups, which are like in an evening after, uh, after, after office hours, maybe two hours, just one or two talks and gather for a coffee or a beer or something and it might it might be easier for people to come to that i don't know what your experience has been but previously we we used to do a full saturday from like 9 in the morning till 5 in the evening of meet up once a month and it's just that people are just uh, it's too much sometimes so we might we might be looking at shorter shorter meetups so if you guys have any feedback for that Yeah, we have a microphone that, but we can. You want to give me the mic? It's also okay. It's true, uh, you do the meetup at, uh, we start normally at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we do uh, four every year. And um, we build it up to the OpenStack day, so we do, th and it has all been aligned. So we are running the meetup for the OpenStack Netherlands, and we do the also the OpenStack day. We did the OpenStack day. Uh, in September, I think, okay. and we had uh, 600 people over there, so nice. it was great. So you have to make uh, planning for a whole year and communicate every time about it, and be aware that you are also using LinkedIn for uh, for making it aware mm -hmm. and find speakers. <laughs> Advanced, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have speakers for we plan it for a whole year. Oh, so wow. yeah, great. yeah. So we are planning now for next year. Ah, yeah, yeah. We are a bit more chaotic, we plan like every month. <laughs> so, but in, in Europe it's difficult because in Germany you have, for instance, six, six user groups, it's all splintered, so. In the Netherlands you have only two, so. Ah, okay. it's, it's easy in the Netherlands. <laughs> in Belgium it's a small one. Peter Dens is running it, so. Yeah. So start at three. <laughs> Thanks, more. thank you. So, yeah. Uh, Yeah, but no, we are recording just for the video recording. Oh, sorry. So um, I'm Denise. Uh, nice to meet everyone here. I also wanted, in addition to um, what you t spoke about, I wanted to bring up to this group, um, we, OpenStack does a lot of industry events. Denise, please. OpenStack does a lot of industry events. And um, I want to start u utilizing some of the user groups and the ambassador team to help me find speakers. So for example, Martin, you know, you're, you're working with me on FOSDEM yeah. that's coming up. And, and we haven't typically used the ambassadors or the end users, 
the user groups for help, but I think we really need that. So, you know, coming locally, um, and so we were talking about some of the events that are coming up in the Benelux area, and, and there's an event, the World Hosting Days, that's coming up in, in Rus Germany, and how can we have a presence there, for example. And those are some of the things I think I'd like to reach out to this group to help me find local people, local speakers, and then local support. And if you happen to have a, an event in your area that you want us to take a look at, then send a, an email. Uh, so I, I managed all of the 2017 industry events as well, and we have a complete list of all of the events we post. So I don't think you guys knew about all that, but uh, yeah. Thanks, Denise. Uh, Yusuf, you had a question? Yeah, this is not so much a question. It's uh, I represent the South African OpenStack uh, user group, and it's more uh, for me to tell you guys what we've been doing. In the last six months, we've held three meetings, and uh, people are being encouraged because of you guys' support. So I want to say thank you to, to all of you and the rest of the OpenStack family for uh, helping Africa get on the map. It's been quite important for us, and uh, we're glad that we are part of the community. Thank you. I think no need to thank us. I think it's just the beginning, right? Like we've seen 40% uh, growth in Africa. We want to make that 100% growth next year. So uh, keep doing what you're doing and thanks for your effort. More questions? Um, I'm uh, Daniel Marin from Romania and I'm representing the user group from Romania. We have uh, currently about 350 members on Meetup and 680 on LinkedIn. We currently keep about three to four Meetups per year. Uh, this year we make only two of them. We held one in February on 25th and we get about 100 people in. And uh, the format, it's a short one. We are uh, starting about six o'clock and until nine in the evening. Usually we have three speakers. Uh, in this group we are two companies supporting. It's the Skylab, we are part of it, and uh, Cloud-based Solution, which are a very uh, strong community uh, participant in Romania and also worldwide. So uh, there we are trying to balance and to uh, bring more power to our group. And of course, we are looking also for, uh, for foreign speakers. Uh, sometimes we are lucky, so we are able to bring two of them or one, depending on the availability. Uh, unfortunately, in the last period, we were not able to plan uh, long uh, period in advance so we are doing kind of a short notice but also we get a lot of attendance so uh, i just want to thanks for the foundation because they help us a lot with uh, advice with some prizes with some money so uh, thank you thanks thank you uh, so i guess i guess if you are uh, as, as, as a part of the user group in India, we've also invited people who are not purely OpenStack but might have an application running on OpenStack or might have a product, like might be part of, say, for example, NFV, OPNFV, right? So we've invited them for, for a talk at a meetup, right? So it's always good to mix it up a bit and try and get some interesting topics like that because the users will appreciate it a lot. Questions? Yeah, yeah, okay, I have a question for the user group leaders. Um, do you have any special need from the foundation or from us? Um, pain points? Uh, yeah, or do you have any pain points where you like to see some improvement, for example? Or something that could make your work better? <laughs> Nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe we combine combine the uh, OpenStack days to uh, fit it in one week, for instance, so you can much easier get international speakers for that. So, so I I think we are doing it in Asia, right? We've got uh, 
we've got about 10 days and five countries together. And I think, I think it starts with JSUK, right? So from Korea, Japan, India, China, and Taiwan. So we've got, we've got five days, five events in the space of 10 days. So it's easier for international speakers to plan their travel. But it's like we are a part of a huge community, you know? So it's always good to maybe talk to a neighboring country's user group, or if you have multiple user groups in your country, to talk to each other and keep lines of communication open. But because at the end of the day, we are all working for the same community. So you can use like a community email list, and if you try to find other user group in your region, we or Dennis can help uh, uh, on email. So in Asia, we started from email and we created Etherpad, and we start put all the dates and options f from each user groups, and we start coordination on that. So you can do the similar things. I think uh, groups.openstack.org also has a list of all the user groups and who is the administrator for each user group. So if you want to reach out to someone, then you can definitely do it. And I think all, all the user group organizers are fairly uh, well versed in the philosophy of open source, right? So if you reach out to someone for help, chances are 99% they will try to help you as much as they possibly can. So it's, this is all about maintaining a healthy ecosystem and a healthy community. Um, I do have one request. So lots of people using meetup.com, right? The meetup.com, yeah. yes. But that's not free, right? You have to pay really Yeah, but money. I think we had this discussion for years now. Yeah. So, so I, it is not so trivial to, yeah, move, I know, I know. to move in the, the meetup uh, yeah, I know. data so, to the portal because so meetup a little bit what I'm trying to uh, say is, or yes, so what I'm trying to say is I have experience with other open source projects and they they support the meetup.com uh, um, like a, the fees and I, I realized that then it's really uh, easy for someone to actually create and use tools to to start and run the user groups in your country so uh, it will be a trivial money so I'm just suggesting it can be one of the good options for the from the foundation to support user groups yeah I think I think uh, the problem we have, I have now is I have more than 5,000 members on my meetup group. Uh, how do I move them? Like I, I, can't, I can't get everyone's email address. So if I want to contact them directly, I can't do it. I have to do it via meetup.com. So it's like vendor lock-in, right? Yeah. And <laughs> I, I don't know how to, how to escape that because it's very difficult. There are members who will only respond once a year. Right, so it's very difficult to ask them to move. I don't want to lose communication with those guys. Yeah, so I have to, I just, it's $70 or something, I just pay it once a year and I, I forget about it, you know, because uh, at the, at the end, end of the day, I just feel like, okay, the community is more important than vendor lock-in in this case. Um, yeah, about tools. So meetup.com, it's not easy to move off from meetup.com because we have a big story there. Um, but I've heard more and more um, user groups are trying to use or using Slack for um, uh, interactive uh, chat, uh, like uh, instant messaging. <coughs> we have uh, we have IRC on the, uh, in the in the OpenStack community, which is a um, uh, more open, doesn't require registration and stuff like this. Uh, I think it, it's important to uh, to encourage people to use um, standard tools like uh, mailing lists and IRC rather than uh, proprietary uh, solutions, protocols uh, like Slack, uh, which uh, also has um, um, usability issues. I mean, you have to set up a page to, for people to register, otherwise it's, it's invite only. There is no, um, I think, possibility of uh, um, logging uh, while we uh, use uh, logging uh, for uh, IRC um, on eavesdrop.openstack.org. And, and so uh, I don't know if, um, if we, uh, if we, there have been a, a few discussions about this on some mailing lists, but, but not a lot. 
And uh, what's your opinion as ambassador about this specific topic? So I think as almost all social media group tools are vendor logged in. You Facebook, LinkedIn, there's nothing you can do. Like LinkedIn, you, if you have your LinkedIn group, you can't transfer it to some other social media. You're stuck with LinkedIn. It's just because they are SaaS products. Uh, yeah, you can you can make an export of the email address. Yes. So when you send you uh, the email address, or you can ask the reader email addresses or uh, telephone yeah. number or something like that. Yeah. 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 Communication tools in social media are awful. I think I think it's it's just like uh, SaaS products, right? You're consuming it. You just it's a utility. It's <laughs> it's you, you you like we are a victim of our own success. I guess as 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 cloud users, right? Okay, I think we have time. So, yeah, we are almost done. But I think if you have any questions, you can reach us. So feel free to drop us an email or, or talk with us directly after yeah. this session. And we are trying to help. And thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.